I've always feared that uh, an event like that. And I've invited every corporate captain, every responsible person in this city to come tonight. And I always fear there'll be empty seats. And there are many empty seats. That's a microcosm of my fear that uh, we are still not aware of what really is going on in the average person that's living in this great city, from people involved in business to politics to the civil service to the average man. And we've tried to invite every important people tonight. And I applaud you. Those that have come tonight, I applaud you. Thank you for your interest. Being an eternal optimist and a man of light, I will never be discouraged. Yang Ahmad, Yang Berhormat, Datu Sri, Asmi Khalid, Minister of Natural Resources and Environment, and Datin Sri, Excellencies, Tan Sri Tan Sri, Pon Sri Pan Sri, Datu Datu and Datin Datin, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Climate Change Week and the premiere of the movie, The Inconvenient Truth. Henry Suso said in the 14th century, by ignorance, the truth is known. Tonight, let me take you back to the history of the slave trade some 200 years ago and how ignorance of this heinous trade has untold repercussions that reverberates even to this day. In the 18th century, Britain was the biggest slaving nation. So integral to the British economy was the slave business that there were few men and institutions of wealth who did not want to invest in it, from the royal family and the Church of England downwards. Slavers could count on the Archbishop of Canterbury to defend them before God, and on politicians like the young William Gladstone, himself the son of a plantation owner, to plead their case in Parliament. Given how entrenched the slave trade was at that time, it is remarkable indeed that a campaign to abolish it, which began in 1787, succeeded only two decades later. It was about 200 years ago today that a bill to abolish slavery got through its second decisive reading in Parliament. Ultimately, it was the shame and degradation that the slave traffic brought to those involved, perpetrators as well as victims, that proved its undoing. For most Europeans, the existence of the slave trade and slavery itself was barely known. In England, there was no slavery. So there was no particular reason for most people to face the ugly truth. The means by which the sugar lumps arrived on the tables of polite society were carefully hidden. Those fine feelings were spared from reality by careful euphemisms. But there was still a pervasive feeling that despite all the evasions those involved in the trade were doing something deeply wrong. This sense of guilt was to prove the Achilles heel of the slave trade in Europe. The task the abolitionists, the abolitionists set themselves was to expose the reality of the trade to an ignorant public. They thought the moral sense of the ordinary people would do the rest, and in part, they were right. But lighting the spark of conscience needs brave individuals, like Thomas Clarkson, the moving spirit behind the abolition of slavery in 1787. Britain was the big power of the day. It alone could enforce abolition throughout the world, as its navy resolutely, resolutely tried to do for the rest of the 19th century. The Europeans and the Americans' role in the slave trade is now well documented and well known, and their governments have apologized. Thank you for the phone interruption. You can something so busy. This historical event that has perils 
to what is happening to our world today is in the area of global warming. It is refreshing to know that Britain, the nation that finally brought an end to the slave trade, is again playing a leading role in putting an end to the world's ignorance on global warming. I applaud the leadership of Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, amongst many others in Europe. It is also reassuring to note that an American in the carnation of former Vice President of the United States, Al Gore, is taking this important message to the world on the horrible effects of global warming. More importantly, Al Gore is engaging Americans in this important debate. These brave individuals may be our modern-day Thomas Clarksons and William Wilbur Forces that could put an end to our ignorance on global warming. We are indeed here tonight to face this very inconvenient truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the genius Albert Einstein once said, I never think of the future because it comes soon enough. Many may remember in 2005, there was a speculation by scientists that the Apophis asteroid had a 1 in 37 chance of hitting the Earth. In Egyptian myth, the Apophis was the ancient spirit of evil and destruction, a demon that was determined to plunge the world into eternal darkness. The threat of a collision in 2029 was eventually ruled out. NASA has argued that a final decision on what to do about the Apophis asteroid will have to be made by all of us by 2013. Apparently, we have some time on our hands to consider this issue. What is, however, not a scientific speculation is that the recent United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change landmark study revealed that the world is at a tipping point. With a projection of 6 degrees centigrade rise in temperature by the end of the century, humanity is in fact sitting on a ticking time bomb. With just 10 years to avert major catastrophes that could send our entire planet into a tailspin of unmitigated disasters. On these issues, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid we definitely do not have time on our hands. The report also claimed that humans are 90% responsible for global warming in the last 50 years. Effectively, this means we can longer blame, blame natural disasters on natural causes or on God's will. St. Augustine, I remind you, said, without God, we cannot. But without you, God will not. Every individual ignorant of the global warming issues today on this earth is actually unwittingly a mini apophis asteroid that is plunging this world into eternal darkness and destruction. We really do not need an external one to wipe us out. Ladies and gentlemen, God made us individually into a masterpiece. From the dust of the earth, and to dust we all know, we all shall return. It is good to remind ourselves of our humble beginnings. The word humble itself comes from the Latin humus, which means fertile ground. And that's why tonight all of us should be more down to earth. We should not be taking our good earth that has always been with us for granted for so long. Let us in full repentance and full humility be fertile ground and stop this wanton destruction and corruption of this earth and transform it into a power of life and a new possibility of creativeness. The world prospered on, remember, without the slave trade as globalized as it was, as dependent on the world was on the slave trade. We prospered without it. We too can prosper without global warming in the future. Let us in humility open our good earth to the sunshine 
into the rain and be ready to receive any seed we sow tonight. Capable of bringing it a hundredfold of productive endeavor for the sake of our present and for the sake of our future generation. But most of all, let us in full humility do it for the glory of God. Thank my Lord Jesus tonight for blessing this event. I thank you very much for your attention and God bless all of you. Thank you.